For my 200th review, I follow Tim Robbins down a rabbit hole and up a ladder. Hello and welcome to Rotted Review of the Day. And today I am taking a look on my 200th horror movie review at the 1990 film Jacob's Ladder. Now, surprisingly, I had never actually watched this before. I heard a lot of people talk about it, uh, but it's just one that never really hit my play cue. And I was kind of browsing around trying to find one that would be befitting of my 200th review, uh, while at the same time also not being one that I've seen before. I kind of want to be surprised of this one. And all of a sudden, I'm like, well, yeah, of course, Jacob's Ladder. Duh. I mean, I, I've never seen it before. It's a classic. Supposedly, it's really, really good. Uh, and uh, so I watched it last night. And honestly, it's going to take me some time to really kind of process this one. Um, usually, uh, in the course of these reviews, I will go ahead and watch a movie. I will think on it for a night. I will write up some notes. Uh, just, just general bullet points that I kind of want to hit during a review and uh, go on from there. Pro you know, process the media, record the video, hit those bullet points, and go on. And uh, in this case, I haven't actually written any notes. I There's a lot that I kind of still need to process, and I'm probably going to do a deep dive on this uh, after some amount of time passes and possibly a rewatch. Uh, this movie follows the titular character of Jacob, uh, played by Tim Robbins, who is a Vietnam War vet, and he is uh, living his life uh, in, uh, in the 1980s as a uh, postal worker, and he is living with his girlfriend. He has an ex-wife and uh, had three sons. One of them had a tragic accident. He has two sons that both live with his ex-wife, and he is basically just kind of getting by living with his girlfriend in this little apartment uh, working as a postal carrier, and uh, he starts seeing some really strange things. Um, some oddball, uh, not necessarily attacks on him, but just uh, strange situations and strange people within those situations, and really iconic, disturbing imagery. Um, and he starts to kind of trace it back to possibly uh, PTSD, possibly uh, wartime efforts with the Army and what happened with him back in Vietnam. He starts finding members of his old battalion. And uh, as answers start coming, they start uh, <laughs> uh, de diving deeper into the mystery of what's actually going on here. Um, and that's about all I will really say on the uh, on the plot there. Uh, also, surprisingly, not only had I <laughs> managed to not see this before, I had managed to avoid the major spoiler as far as what was really going on in the storyline. And I'm not going to uh, reveal that here just because I think that my experience was much better not having known that and having that mystery unfold in front of me as I watched it. And if somebody else is in the same boat that I was in, I don't want to ruin that for them. So even though... 1990, I kind of would ordinarily consider statute of limitations to be up. I still will keep this spoiler free. Uh, but suffice it to say, this has a lot of uh, really iconic biblical imagery in it. Uh, not necessarily a one-to-one -one allegory, but uh, a, a lot of imagery and uh, metaphors and, yeah, I mean, allegorical references. This actually reminded me a fair bit of the Darren Aronofsky movie Mother. Uh, and I think the big difference between the two is that Mother uh, was uh, strictly uh, allegorical whereas this had allegorical imagery befitting a character's narrative. And I honestly prefer Jacob's Ladder for that. I think it works better on a storytelling point of view, although both movies had me thinking a lot about them afterward, uh, you know, picking out moments that I remembered were in the movie and then trying to trace them back to where the storyline ultimately wound up and where that piece of the puzzle fits in the grander picture. Um, this was a really, really remarkable movie. Uh, it was scary. It was disturbing. It had some fantastic acting in it. Uh, and speaking of which, I'm going to go ahead and throw the scores up all right now here. Uh, each category is worth up to 25 points for a total possible score of 100 points. And you see that this got pretty darned high all across the board, and I think deservedly so. Everybody that was in this 
did a fantastic job of portraying their characters. And again, I want to go back and rewatch it because I really think this would lend itself to a second watch, possibly a third or a fourth, uh, just to get the context of the characters and the context of the situations and the settings and the actions within uh, the grander scope of things now that I know what I know. And yeah, I mean, as far as a reveal goes, I had kind of figured out the what fairly early on. The thing that was kind of odd for me was the when. If anybody had seen the movie, you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, but uh, that was that was an interesting reveal, and it does make me want to go back and watch it some more there. Uh, but uh, noteworthy performances here. I think that uh, one of my big standouts, I mean, Tim Robbins did a fantastic job as Jacob right out the gate there. Uh, one of the better performances I've seen him in, aside from Shawshank Redemption. Um, but another mention I want to do is uh, Danny Aiello as his chiropractor was, a, he did such an amazing job as the soft-spoken, uh, guiding hand of healing uh, that uh, helped Jacob in many ways. And I really, really loved the way that Danny portrayed that character. And I think he is one of the key aspects of this movie that make me want to go back for a rewatch. So, um, this definitely had some, uh, truly terrifying and, uh, disturbing imagery in it. And that was a big, big mark on the technical score there. Apparently all of this uh, was done in camera. The only thing that uh, would be considered to be a special, special effect was uh, something that we see a fair bit these days, but apparently was, uh, I think this may have been the actual genesis of this effect, is the rapidly shaking head of a person. And uh, from what I saw, that they did that, even that in camera, basically filming it at four frames per second and then speeding it up to your standard 24. Uh, Whereas now I, I pr would probably be, uh, you know, digital effects through and through. Um, but uh, all told, the technical was great on this one. Everything really served the narrative. Uh, the plot I was absolutely impressed with. The intention, it, it hit me like a sledgehammer, and I am still thinking about it, and I'm going to continue thinking about it for a while. So rather than try and squeeze a deep dive in today, I want to actually give this some time to marinate in my brain. And... I am taking three weeks off, so it's going to have some time to do that, and I'm probably going to be doing a very late deep dive discussion, uh, spoiler filled, on Jacob's Ladder sometime after I get back uh, from my vacation on this channel here. But that should about do it. I mean, you got the scores there, total of 91 out of 100 points. Yeah, absolutely. I would absolutely recommend this to anybody that has never watched Jacob's Ladder and you are a horror movie fan. Don't make the mistake I did. Watch it as soon as possible. Uh, it, it really is worth a watch. It is a great, great movie and a great horror movie to boot. So that should about do it. That's my review of Jacob's Ladder. I will see you in three weeks on Pi Day, March 14th. I will be back with uh, review number 201. Thank you very much. Uh, remember, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted. <laughs>